Okay, everybody, Stephen Key here, and today, now I say this all the time, I have a very special guest, but I really do today, because I'll tell you why. Rebecca does something that's very close to my heart. You design really fun promotional novelty items. Is that correct, Rebecca? Yes. Okay. Yes. And they're ideas that just put a smile on people's face, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's how I started. So, so, so when, yeah. So when I got to see some of the things that you've done, um, really great work. And um, yes. Okay. So I want to start at the very beginning. Where do you live? And um, what do you do? Let's start with that. Okay. So I live in Tottenham, in London. Um, with my partner and my dog and my cat. Okay. Um, and so I still license products. Yes. Um, I also work a lot with museums and gallery shops. Now, let's talk about that. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop. Okay. Because because that's really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, you do a lot of work with the museums, um, shops, right? I mean. Yeah quite a bit and because I looked at your wonderful resume and let me let me pull can I pull up a couple things here because I thought they were so interesting um, you work with these type of stores retailers museums and you create products for them how does that work yeah so it's um, so it's either based on so for example they might have a, a major exhibition coming up um, so one example was um, a few years back at the British Library, and they had a Gothic literature exhibition. Okay. Um, and so I, they kind of approached me to think of ideas for like special merchandise for the shop, and I kind of went off and just had a like, you know, brain dump and just like anything I could think of to do with Gothic literature and. Um, yeah, and then it was kind of whittled down into two okay. main stories. So, yeah, so it's either based on the exhibition or maybe they're part of their collection. Okay. All right, let's talk about that for a minute. Because a lot of people, they don't realize that um, if you're creative, like you are, that you can license products, but you can also design for museums. You designed for the Transport Museum, the London. You designed for the British Library. You did... You designed for the Founding Museum, all these museums that you designed for. Do and how did they find you, or did you find them? Um, a bit of a combination. Um, I think I think how it happened was because I was years back when I launched my company. Um, I was coming up with my own ideas and selling my products, and they seemed to appeal to quite a lot of museum shops. Okay. Um, so like the Tate, like the Design Museum, um, and I guess it kind of went from there because I stopped um, producing my own brand stuff so much, and then okay. kind of talking to okay, so stories and yeah, so it went from there, yeah. So they say, Rebecca, we've got a new, we have something new that's coming up, and they they kind of give you a target to hit, and then you come up with different types of products for that event type of thing, and. Yeah, and it usually starts quite loosely, so they'll kind of say, um, okay, so can I give an example? Um, yes. So there's the Museum of London at the moment, and they have an executions um, <laughs> okay. exhibition coming up. So um, I'm trying to think of something. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this one, I think, was in the British Library. It's slaughtered. I mean, you did, I mean, it looks pretty good gruesome right james please put that up on the on the video there all these different products that have to do with i don't know it's kind of like um like blood and hearts and stuff like that yeah because for the british library we kind of had two main stories so it's kind of like dracula obviously very well known and then so there's dracula range and then the jekyll and hyde range okay um, and that yeah the slaughtered with, but it's kind of, I don't know in, in the States, but here it's kind of like, because the, the slaughtered also appears on a shot glass. Okay, yes. Um, and it's slang for getting really drunk. Oh. I don't, so that's kind of the joke. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it's like, you're, yeah. 
<laughs> they, it seems like a lot of things you do are kind of a play on words sometimes, or they put yeah. a smile on your face. Okay. And they're, yeah. and so you're designing their merchandise for the, for the retail stops, for the, the gift stores, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how yeah. do they pay you? I mean, do they pay you per job? I mean, how does that work? Um, two different ways, two main different ways. Okay. I either do a flat fee okay. um, for the artwork. So the kind of the concept and the artwork, okay. and I hand that over to them, and then they, the museum will do the production okay. using their own suppliers. All right. Or I can do the whole thing. I can come up with the concepts, do the artwork, find the suppliers, do the production, sell to the museum. You do so, that too. Oh, that's that sounds like a lot to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Can be, yeah. Okay. Especially for the British Library, that was like 24 products or something, I think. Wow, so you can even yeah. do the sourcing. So you've got people that you know in the industry that can source it and deliver it. Do you actually do the inventory or does the factory ship directly? How do you ha handle that? That seems very complicated. Yeah, I mean, they would ship directly to, to the museum, okay. yeah. Yeah, but I would, so kind of like that, in that situation, that's okay. how I, get my fee so okay. I mark up on the product so I kind of like wholesale the got it to the okay where I get my fee that way so yeah how I mean do they just call you up and go Rebecca we need this is that how that works or do you have to compete with other people um yeah I mean you know I wish it was that easy it's like there is there is definitely a lot of competition out there okay um and there's not always you know I have a certain style it I guess okay. People think of me if they after something a little bit quirky or a little bit All different. Right. So yeah. So you okay. Know. All right. Let's talk about this one here about Jen Lane. Jen Lane. Um, yeah. This is about drinking, right? Isn't this about? Um, it's. It looks like a keychain. It looks like it could be a lot of different things. Beer Street. What is that all about? Sure. It's really interesting, actually. So that's for the Foundling Museum in London. Um, which just, I mean, to uh, not to go too long, to, on too long about it, but it was um, basically, it was a, a hospital for, for children who were basically found on okay. the street who didn't have their parents. Um, Hogarth, the artist Hogarth, had a big part in setting up okay. the hospital. Um, and Hogarth has two very famous paintings, Beer Street and Gin Lane. Okay. Um, and they were two very, beer was like seen as a healthy drink. Okay. And gin was not. So oh. it's like this <laughs> okay. two, um, two sides of London life in that, in that period of time. Okay. Um, God, you've got so many things that you've designed. It's really, kind of, it's so amazing to see. Let's talk about another one before we move on. Um, I want to talk about, I think this is very clever. Um, it's the Muse Maker. Um, what was this? This is about, um, I guess, mining. Do they do a lot of, yeah, explain that, because I love the way you've done some really clever things there, but also the mugs with the fingerprints. Uh, yeah, so there was, it was two different ranges. So Museum Maker was, was a big um, arts council project okay. years back, and they paired up um, artists and designers with, um, with museums and galleries. Okay. Um, and it was one of my first big commissions, actually, with museum and gallery. Um, and it was this amazing story. Um, as we all know, products tell tell great stories. Okay. And it was the story of this of the miners in the 1930s. Okay. Um, and they started uh, doing art classes. Okay. Time. All right. Uh, and so they kind of wanted a product to, and they ended up, you know, doing these amazing paintings, and it was this real kind okay. of social documentary of the whole time. Um, and so they wanted something to kind of commemorate them, right. um, and that's when I came up with the, the idea of the helmet, the miners' helmet, yeah. which was then turned into a bowl. Okay. Um, but then I went on, they also, after I did that, that was kind of a special commission, but then I went on to do the mine, yeah, the dirty fingerprint, like the cold print. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> all right, we're going to show, we're going to show the, the dirty fingerprints and all the merchandise. Now, let's talk about your creativity for a minute. How does that work? Um, 
you, yeah, what is that process? Because they're just very clever, right? Do you really study um, what's being shown? Do you, do you look at what customers go, how do you, how do you come up with these clever ideas? How do you do that? Um, it's a really good question. I mean, I think a lot of it does start from that word play. Okay. And so I just kind of, you know, my, my brain works very laterally. So I just kind of, it's really hard to say how, how okay. the creativity comes from. It's just a kind of way of thinking. And, I mean, do um, you sit there on your desk and pull them out, or do you do you go on walks? Do you bring different visuals? I mean, do you make connections? I mean, how do yeah. you? Is it a hard process for you? Or is it easy? Do you um, out of how many ideas do you submit, and how many do they take? How does that? You know, I've got ten ideas, but only one's really good. How does that work? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I love it. I lo I love that part. Is I that's the part I love the most is trying to think of the ideas because okay. it's. It is that it's that kind of challenge of right. you're not coming up with something obvious. You really want to get into the essence of, right. of what it should be about, or you know, and and yeah. And I think I just I look at visuals, like it's wordplay, um, go for walks. Because I like the, you know when I look at the fingerprints, right? You, you you had to put yourself in that situation of the miners and their hands getting dirty and they're touching things, right? I mean, did you? kind of walk that through and go, that's probably what happened, right? And I'm going to do the merchandise. All right. So I just think it's so clever. Okay. Now, um, so you do free, I'm going to call that freelance jobs, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They pay the bills. They're probably pretty good. So what about the licensing now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you, you um, work with a friend of ours, um, uh, Fred over there, Jason at Fred. Um, and you've licensed a lot of ideas over there too, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it all started with Fred. Um, when I, I launched, I didn't even know about licensing. I didn't even know it was a thing. Um, when I launched my own brand company in, um, what was it, late 2006. Um, okay. And that's when I met Fred. He would he would come over every year because he knew there was, there was you know the good like young talent kind of things so all the the shows the London Design Week shows okay um, yeah and that's how I met Fred now I want to talk about that first product that you licensed to Fred because I saw the sketch <laughs> and, and James is going to put that up there because. Everybody in their mind thinks, well, gee, you know, what do you have to show a company to license an idea? And do you have to build a prototype? And how professional does it need to look? And I saw your sketch and I thought, is she playing a joke on me with that sketch? <laughs> right? Because it's just kind of pretty basic, right? I mean. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, this is a long time ago. As I say, it was like, I didn't kind of even, maybe naively realize you know because I, I was working with Fred and and sending him ideas and I just kind of drew something really quickly it was more about the idea you know it's like okay. I had an idea he was amazing at visualizing you know okay. they're amazing design so they I knew that he would know how it would look wow. but for a lot, lot lots of companies don't know how, how much how so are you saying that your work has gotten better that you present better because when I saw oh, that I rather better these days than those because we're, we're going to show that uh, up on the screen. James probably already has. It's pretty darn basic. I mean, but the idea is strong, right? Yeah, the, okay. yeah exactly. And I kind of just think it's quite funny. I mean, yeah, I think Fred called them my, ter my terrible drawings once. Okay, yeah, so. it's called Have an Ice Day. Um, great. Did you come up with the, the title to Have an Ice Day? Because it, it's just done and, and it's really done clever. Um, that was kind of it, really. That the title is is the product, you know. It's like when I came up with the product and um, okay. the, item, the title, rather. What about you know? party in your pants? What about that? <laughs> that's a very recent product, actually. Um, that's been taken on by a company called Boxer in the UK, um, and it's kind of a theme I had in my ideas for a long time. Right. And uh, it's just again, it's kind of play on words. Yeah. Okay. No, I, talk, I don't know. Praise, I, in your pants. I really like um, 
the um, salt shakers, the candlestick. Oh, um, thank you. How clever is that? I mean, I, I'm, you know, when I see these ideas, I really love them because I, I see, I, I look at things and I think, well, why can't they, why can't they do that? I mean, they do this, but why can't they do that? And it seems like you have a real knack for that too. You, 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 you find the humor in it and you change it up. Um, but we're going to show that also up on this screen. Okay. So I, I'm looking at the drawings now. This is kind of interesting because I'm seeing the drawings now for the, the, the candlestick salt and pepper shakers. Yeah. Now tell me about that. I mean, that looks, that looks like it's real far from the sketch of the earlier one. I didn't do them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, but it's an interesting story because that was that was the first time um, with that product. So that company, so, right. um, Spanish company called Balvin, they didn't do the the kind of product development okay. themselves. So they wanted you know finished drawings ready okay. to go to the factory. Oh, okay. Basically. And that was the first time, and so I worked with um, with a guy um, who was able to produce those drawings for me. Okay. From my terrible sketches. So you really have to see what how well the company, if they've got their own design team, you know what their capabilities are, and kind of work around. You know, like you said, Fred, they can see a sketch on a napkin, they can develop it further, but some of them cannot. Is that correct? So you. you... Yeah, some of them, and I think more. I think especially nowadays, I would not get away with sending the have a nice day sketch to anyone. <laughs> okay. Um, you've, uh, one lump or two, you've done quite a few ideas for Fred, haven't you? I have, yeah. Yeah, no, they're, they're fantastic to work with. I love Say Cheese. I mean, that's yeah. very clever uh, cheese board design. Very, very clever. Um, we're going to show all of these. And it um, looks like you've done how many for Fred? How many designs have you licensed? At least 30? In total, I think um, nearly 30. Okay. Not just with Fred. Um, I think with Fred is at least at least 10. Okay. Not more, yeah. I like the door pause. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you've got a... You have a very good sense of humor, I guess. So you must be fun at dinner parties with your sense of humor. Yes. No. Are you? Are you? Yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting because my my humor really comes out in my work. Okay. I don't think. I mean, like my close friends. You know, I'm, I'm a little. You know, I'm kind of funny. But I think when people meet me for the first time, I'm not like a funny person. I don't like. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's more like this kind of subtle, okay. observational stuff going on so okay. yeah so what um what would you recommend someone that's watching this for the first time right that's thinking gee i'm creative and and um i think i'm clever and i can draw and um and they want a license right and maybe reach out to fred or other companies what would you tell them is it a numbers game be persistent know their product line i mean what would you tell someone just starting now um, definitely be persistent. It, it's really hard work. I mean, you know, I have had a lot of ideas taken on, but it's it's very hard to get okay. an idea taken on. Um, and especially, I mean, for me in the in the novelty market, okay. even more so now because okay. I think it, there's more of a shift to to well being and and kind of products to do with that. So, okay. um, but definitely, you know, you have to be persistent. And I would, you know. Just focus on it as much as you can. Do okay. as many ideas as you can. Send them out to as many people as you can. Okay. Um, and just keep it going. What do you do? Um, a lot of people are very impatient, Rebecca, when they send an idea out and they, they want to get a response very quickly. What do you tell that person? How long does it usually take to get a response? And, and what should you be doing while you're waiting? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, I struggle with this one. It, take, it, it can take a very long time. It can be okay. quite frustrating sometimes um, right. and you don't hear back from people and do you, do you yeah. bug them do you send them an email going hey did you get it what do you think move on do you do you do that yeah i do so you kind of leave it a week a couple of weeks follow okay. up 
leave it another week, follow up, you know, you have to, okay. and then, then, then they might eventually get back to you. And but, when they get know, back and they say no, are you rejected or you just go, oh, okay, I mean, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, you kind of get used to it <laughs> in a way. Okay. You do and you don't. I mean, some of them, some of them I kind of think, oh, really? You don't like that one? Or, you know, <laughs> and I kind of look at some of their other products and think, it's just as good as some of the other ones. Okay. But, yeah, they have a lot of factors to consider, I guess. Okay. And most of the concepts, let's say you're working with Fred, are those just drawings? Are they sketches, colored ones, maybe a little bit a little bit more professional than the early ones? But are you building prototypes? Or what, what do you send Fred? Um, so now it would be drawings on my done on my tablet. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, do, you, do you show the package at all, or is it just the gag? It's, it's, it's kind of the, maybe the name and the product and how it's being used. How much do you show him for him to get it? Yeah, so it would be, um, say if it's, I mean, if it's, if it's Jason at Fred, it would, it's kind of easier if I'm sending to him because he, I, I know, we know how each other think. And, okay. But with other people, they might, they need it. Some other companies need a lot more information, so I would say go with lots of, as much information as you can. Okay. Um, include packaging if that's an important thing. Definitely. Do you ever, do you ever build a prototype? Um, no. I mean, the, the candles. <laughs> Good, I love it. I mean, for my own brand stuff, kind of, yeah, but. Um, no. Not really, the, the, the candlesticks were the, the okay. places I came to for licensing, yeah. What about protection? Do you file patents on everything you submit to Fred? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, no, it's a, it's a tricky one and, and that's, right. you know, that's an issue. I mean, I remember very early on in my career, someone saying, you know, you can register a design in every country. Yeah. But they, I remember someone saying very early on that just get, Get your product out there get as much press for it as you can so people okay. know it's yours okay. and yeah so i haven't no okay. i haven't pitched anything and you know some things have got copied but okay what does it feel like when you see your product at a at a museum or something how does that feel um it feels amazing yeah it's really yeah i feel really proud i think have you ever been to someone's house and seen one of your your creations there. How does that, what is that? What is that like? I have, but it was actually a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my um, my I am not a doormat. Okay. At, at a friend's house, but it was actually wasn't my my one. So. So you've just got a good sense of humor, even about that as well. It, I I see. I don't know. It's tricky. Okay. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not cool that, that other companies rip, rip, rip you off, but... It's kind of life. Yeah, it's hard to challenge, so... Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on InventRight TV. Um, You're welcome. And showing your, your magic and showing your creativity. And this has been a, a, one of my favorite interviews. So thank you very much. It's just, I can't stop smiling because when I look at them, I go, they're brilliant, and and I remember I remember um, where is it? One of the first things I licensed was a, a little plastic arrow for Valentine's. I'm stuck oh, on you. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, um, I really do love that this industry very much. So Rebecca, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Thank you.